Yeah, so I'd like to share six special memories of the 2019 Rugby World Cup uh, for me as a player um, that's really been amazing. I think the six that I'm going to be sharing, um, it's moments that I've been enjoying throughout of the competition and moments that I'll never ever forget uh, for the rest of my rugby career. I think to start off with, I'll, I'll start off with the, with the All Blacks. Um, the first test, which was definitely the, the big match uh, to set the foundation for, for the Rugby World Cup uh, for both teams. And yeah, it's just to go out playing one of the best teams in the world. You want to measure yourself against the best in the world and playing the opening game against the All Blacks um, just made it so much uh, special. With us not getting the result that we wanted, I think the belief um, and the hunger has always been there after, after that loss. And we just kept on, kept on believing in one another and we knew what our goal was. It's, it's not just for us as players to be the best that we can, but we knew the, the situation back in South Africa and what South Africa has been challenged with, with a lot of politic things, crime, um, a lot of difficulties, to put it that way. Um, so it wasn't about ourselves, it was about a whole country um, that's been supporting us and we just want to give back to them and put on a lot of smiles and create a lot of positive vibes in South Africa and create a lot of opportunities for younger and older people um, because we the heroes, um, we, can, we as, as athletes can make a difference. But the message was it's, it's not about us, uh, it's about giving a lot of motivation to millions of people um, back in South Africa um, because if you can put a smile on a young boy's face that's been walking in the streets, um, that means a lot to that little boy or little girl. And just to, for us, is just to see our country in a better state. Um, that's what we wanted to achieve and just unite our country um, the way things has been. Um, see everybody together, having fun, having, 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 sharing some tears together and just enjoying each and every moment um, with us and feeling it with us um, as we went to the World Cup. I think the moment we left South Africa as we were sent off uh, from Johannesburg, all the people that came out, um, they've been there shouting for us, encouraging us and just telling us, just go out, fly the South African flag high and then just play the best rugby that you can. Uh, my second one is it's an interesting one and it's a bit of a sad one for me. Um, it's a match against Italy, um, where literally the 79th minute I got a line break, um, got tackled, say 15 meters from from the try line, um, and I literally twisted my ankle. And in the moment when I twisted it, I thought, listen, I couldn't get up, I couldn't stand on my feet. I was like, I think this could be the end of of my rugby World Cup. And the first thing that I, that I just did was I just asked God, listen, please just keep your hand over me and just protect me and may this injury not be as bad as what I think it is. And I literally just walked off the field. I, I felt calm. Um, I never felt that this opportunity was going to be taken away from me. Um, although at this, the moment when the injury happened, I thought, listen, is some big, big trouble. But after I did the prayer, I really felt calm. And so I got injured the Saturday. I had to train by the latest of Tuesday afternoon to make sure that I could be selected for, for the up and coming weekend. And I got the Monday train. I couldn't finish a training. I had to go off, um, did what I have to do to get ready for, for Tuesday. And the same thing happened. Um, I got through the training, but I wasn't as comfortable as, as what I was as a player and you just get a lot of a lot of emotions going through your head a lot of things going through your head listen you don't want to force force yourself because you don't want to let the team down as well and i just did what i had to do i did what the physios asked me to do and i just put in the extra effort and i got to the wednesday when we had our off day i went with the, with the physio to do some extras and make sure that i can run a flat out on my ankle and change direction and that wednesday afternoon literally everything planned out properly. Um, I did what I had to do. I did my fitness tests, what I had to pass. I did everything, I wouldn't say 100%, but I did everything in the ability that I, that I think I could have played in the game. But it hasn't been, it hasn't really been easy because it's always been in my head, um, what if I get another tackle? 
or just twist it again and it might just just stay completely. And I got selected for 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 the quarterfinal match against Japan, the host, which is obviously one massive game because what happened back in 2015. Um, a lot of the Japan people had a lot of belief that it could happen again and we knew what happened and we never wanted that ever to happen to, to the Springbok years again um, because that definitely hurts a lot. I think everybody just got motivated for that match again as well. Yeah, I can remember going into the Japan game, the first kickoff uh, Andre did uh, was onto their number eight and I made the first tackle. First thing, my ankle went again. I was like, Jesus, this is going to be a long, long match for me. Carried on playing, carried on playing. Uh, second ball I got, got tackled again. Ankle went again. Um, but it went probably for like five times in that game against Japan. My ankle just kept rolling, kept rolling. But I just kept on pushing through the pain that I, that I could have handled as a player. And I just got to about the last 20 minutes and I told the, the, the doctor, listen, I don't think I can go any go anymore because I think I'm I'm definitely gonna either break something or tear something really bad. And I knew we had a great uh, great bench and we had great uh, backup as wingers um, with with Spoon Corsi there as well. Um, and we definitely as we have learned a lot from one another. And I knew I wouldn't be the greedy greedy person to to force something and let the team down at the end of the day because that's not who I am as a player and that's not what we want for 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 the jersey. Um, if you're not ready, you're not ready and that's another opportunity for another player. So yeah, that was really a bit of emotional for me um, because my tournament could have been done. Um, I could have gone home uh, not being a part of, of, of the team. So I just kept telling myself, you just have to stay strong, believe and have faith in God that he will push you through this. Yeah, so that was my, my second one. <laughs> my, my third memory is, is definitely scoring against England in, in the final. Um, after all the things that I've been through from the Italy game up until the quarter final, I missed the, the semi final against Wales. I must say, the boys really played well against the semi final for us to, to qualify for the final. And to be honest, I wasn't sure if I would probably be in the team for, for the final because the team that's played in the semi final really laid a good foundation. And you, you couldn't fault anyone for, for having a bad game. Yeah, I was just there, just doing what I have to do to make sure that I'm ready for, for whatever comes my way. And, I can remember Spoo telling me, "Listen, if I play the semi-final, I'll do the I'll, can, I'll do the best that I can. Um, and if you play the final, I know you'll do the best that you can and and leave up from where where, where you left throughout the competition. That just shows you that there's a lot of a lot of belief in the group. There's a lot of maturity uh, within the players and especially guys in the same role, uh, same position as you. We never wanted." Uh, how could I say? We always wanted the best for, for one another, whatever could benefit the team, that's what we wanted. If we could learn from someone different, that's what we wanted because that, we knew that was going to be the difference at the end of the day. We're not doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for 57 million people back home. And you could just see that within the group uh, throughout the competition. And I can remember the special message from Coach Rasi Rasmus was before the final. He literally drew up all the players, where they come from, uh, what school they went to, the different races, the variety um, and everything. And that literally for me throughout the whole competition because yes, he can give you a message, but he made it so much special. Literally drew up each and every player saying where he comes from, what school he went to, how we had to get through the system to achieve and get to professional rugby. That to me literally touched, touched something special inside me. Um, but we obviously had to had to keep calm um, because you know, in England winning uh, New Zealand in the semi-final, which was uh, a really awesome game, um, and they really played well. And to be honest, I think out of 100 percent, they were 80 percent, 85 percent the favourites to 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 win the final. Um, and we just had to look look back at ourselves, uh, just. Do what the coaches ask from us. Just make sure that we know every single detail. Um, 
because in a final it's not about magic, it's, it's a small detail, it's a, the discipline, it's going to be the team that has the best defence, the best hunger on the day that, that's going to pull it through. I think what, what helped us a lot as, as players as well is having our families around. Uh, the coach, um, he gave us the, the freedom for our families to come over and, and share the special um, occasion with us, um, which not a lot of teams, I think, had that uh, leverage. Yeah, we were fortunate enough to have them in the same hotel as us. Um, you can sleep with them, and I think that makes it so much special because you want to you want to enjoy this moment with them as well. Um, although you know what the bigger task is, um, but just knowing you have that extra comfort, you have the extra support with you, makes it makes your life so much easier. And yeah, if you have a bad day at training, you can come back to the hotel. You have your family, you have someone around that cares and loves you a lot. Um, which I think also played a massive role for us. I was just excited the moment I got the ball in my hands on the sideline with, with a bit of space uh, around me. And I just made sure that I won't let this opportunity go by and just make the most out of it. I just did what I had to do, what I've been training or done throughout the, the 2019 rugby season. Um, for us as wingers, is whenever there's opportunities, it's just to finish off. I just got the ball. I just knew I had to make something happen with the two guys coming across. Uh, either just stop and then go again, and I just went on the goose. I had the one-on-one -on -one opportunity with, with Owen Farrell, and I just backed myself. Um, as I went on the goose, I just went on the outside. But he probably thought that I'll just keep on going on the inside, and I just went back with a two-step on the inside uh, and got away from, from the tackle from Owen Farrell, and then just the first thing is to get to the try line as quickly as possible because you don't want to slip or you don't want to knock on, knock on the ball, you just want to dot it down as quickly as possible. It's really been, how can I say, enjoyable um, and yeah, I'll never ever forget that moment. My, my fourth one uh, that was also really special to me was definitely after the, the final whistle went. Um, where our first first thing I did, uh, I obviously thank God for 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 this whole competition, uh, for pulling me through the competition and no serious injuries. And the first thing I did after that is I went straight to the stands. I went to go fetch my family um, because I knew without them this this would definitely not be possible. Uh, my wife has always been there to been there to support me. My little one is always there to to motivate me because I. I Yes, I'm doing this because I love it, but I'm doing this because I also want to create a better future for her and make sure that there is a lot of opportunities for her in the future as she grows older. That has always been my motivation uh, to do better is, is for her, um, for, my, for my wife, uh, for always being there for me and always praying for me um, through thick and thin. She had a lot back in South Africa where she's worked, she studied, she worked, um, and she left everything just like that um, to come to France. Um, with me um, on a new journey, a new opportunity. I'll forever be grateful for that because she could have decided, listen, I'd rather want to stay in South Africa and focus on my career, but she came with me to support me and with us having the, the little one, we, all, we always wanted to be together because uh, there, was never, there was never a day since the little one was born that we wanted to, to be on different paths. Um, we always wanted to be, get, be together and share every moment. Yeah, the fourth one was just um, the whole team uh, uh, celebrating when we lifted up the, the Webb Ellis uh, Cup, just to see all the smiles, um, the happiness on all the faces, not just players, but, but management as well, um, because there's been a lot of hard work put in behind the scenes um, from, from management, uh, physios, doctors, uh, dietitians, uh, coaching staff, players, Everybody back home at the um, SA Rugby offices, um, everybody's been on the same journey and yeah, with us lifting that cup, we, we had a lot of smiles, we had a, lo a lot of laughs on our faces. Uh, we know why, because there's been so many people that's, that added so much value towards this team. Uh, previous, previous World Cup winners in 1995, 2007 and now us in 2019 and then Obviously, the big people back home uh, behind the scenes that's making everything everything work, making sure that everything is it's in place, that there's no hiccups whenever you travel overseas or get to the World Cup. Everything runs very smoothly. Um, the moment the final whistle went, um, you knew that you're the 2019 World Champion. 
But the moment that whistle went, the moment we lifted the cup, the moments we shared in the in the changing room, if you could ask any player in that group, it hasn't sunk in as much after that game. Um, it hasn't sunk in the day after um, because it just doesn't feel real. Um, although you you've won it, um, but it just it doesn't feel like reality. My next moment is probably one of the the biggest moments that are that I'll be sharing now is it's, it's landing in South Africa, uh, driving in the streets and seeing all the people um, in Johannesburg, Pretoria, Durban, East London, Port Elizabeth and, and Cape Town. Um, it's, it's really awesome to see all the people come out. I promise you there's people that hasn't gone, gone to work and they wanted to, to, to share this moment with us as well. Um, that's the moment we landed in Johannesburg. I think that's when everything sunk in. Um, just getting the warm welcome from each and every South African um, at the airport, um, in the streets. Um, that's when everything sunk in to me, um, knowing that, okay, this is real. Um, it's really happened. Uh, this is what we've, what we've wanted um, since the, the start of the World Cup. And we've achieved it. And, just seeing everybody united, no matter what, what race, what culture you're from, everybody was together, everybody was, was crying, everybody was laughing together. That's what we wanted, uh, wanted as a group. Um, and I think we, we have achieved that. I think the, there's still a lot that we, we, can, we can do as, as rugby players to make a difference within South Africa, whether it's, a, it's a, a small thing. We start as a little bit, it can just get better and better from there. Yeah, to me, it was definitely getting back into South Africa, seeing everyone supporting us and driving throughout the, the, the cities. Um, people get to see you for 10 seconds. They've been standing there for four hours, but they only see you for 10 seconds. But they will carry that for the rest of their, for, of their lives and they will never ever forget that, that moment. That's what you just want to do is give back to, to people um, as much as you can. In, in Port Elizabeth where there's been one boy literally running behind the bus for an hour and a half non-stop. He just kept on running and cheering us on and waving. Small things like that that we take for granted. Um, that could be a big difference in that boy's uh, life. Um, you never know what he, what he wanted to achieve and by seeing his, his heroes, um, that could make a difference for him to excel in, into his goal, what he wanted to, to do in life. And small things like that really makes a big difference um, in people's lives. We, what we can do as players is just give back, as I said, and I will always say that, give back as much as we can.